Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to be talking about the psychology of starvation and the profound negative impacts that starvation can have on your mental and emotional stability. It's very important that you have an awareness of the changes that your mind is going to undergo when you are running a nutrient deficiency or you are at a caloric deficit. In today's video, we're going to be referencing the Minnesota Starvation Experiment of 1945 and extracting from it knowledge which we can apply to our emergency preparedness planning. So let's get to it. Alright, so in my personal opinion, one of the best videos I've ever made, and no, I'm not tooting my own here, I'm actually my own worst critic when it comes to uh, assessment of my videos but in my personal opinion the most dramatic and insightful video that I've ever contributed to the preparedness community has to be my video entitled after the collapse hunger and starvation and within that video I dramatically articulate the process in which your body slowly deteriorates when it's deprived of food now that video was based on scientific research but it came out a little more artsy than I had planned. And today I wanted to just talk specifically about the actual study and what was learned from that study and what we can apply to uh, emergency preparedness planning. Because one of the things that provoked this video today was the fact that I'm going through a very challenging situation in my life right now. I'm not gonna get into specifics, but all you need to know is that it's incredibly stressful and I've had to draw upon my survival skills in the resilience sense, psychologically speaking. I've needed to be very stoic and psychologically resilient in order for me to weather this storm that I'm in. Now, partway through this major life shift, I started dieting because every spring I start running and I like to drop the winter weight. Uh, it's nothing that I find challenging. I just do it. It's a matter of simply uh, making a choice to lose weight and I lose weight. I don't sit there and spin my wheels and I got thousands of videos on that that you can go and see. But what I've noticed is that when I'm running this caloric deficit, which is all the time now, uh, I'm much more irritable. I'm much more short-tempered. I can make very rash decisions. I'm not thinking as clearly. I cannot articulate things as well. And I'm not as mentally sharp as I am when I'm in maintenance mode. And this got me reflecting again on what my state of mind is going to be if I'm ever put in a situation where I have to ration my resources. If you ever do find yourself in a disaster situation and you don't know how long it's going to be to resolve that situation even if you have an abundant amount of resources you still want to ration them for a couple of reasons number one of course is the obvious one is that you don't know how long you are going to have to be self-reliant and number two is that if you find yourself in a community of people and you are the only one who isn't losing weight and you're looking like kim jong-un and everybody else is looking like north korea's utterly famished military then obviously you're going to be making yourself a target some of my primary gray man strategies in an shtf scenario would be to always accept government help don't shy away from it just because you have stuff you want to make out as if you do have nothing you want to stand in those lineups if you have to to make it appear like you have nothing you want to be at a caloric deficit where you look like you're tired and hungry and starving. The last thing you want to appear is satisfied when everybody else is dissatisfied. It's very much like the guy who has a lot of money who's strolling through the hood and has, has his hands over top of his pockets and clearly looks as though he's holding something and thus will be a target of thugs who want to rob him. There's a very real demeanor that gets communicated to opportunistic people when you're holding out. So you wanna get into the character of the guy who's looking for stuff as opposed to a guy who's holding out and trying to protect stuff. Get in that mentality of I'm out there, I'm seeking, I'm scavenging as opposed to I'm defending. Now obviously you aren't because you have stuff but that's the character you're playing for the world. This very much is a simple art of war strategy. Appear weak when you are strong. So practicing self-deprivation in terms of nutrition right now 
is important. It's important that you can resist putting food in your mouth. And this is very hard this day and age when you can go into a 7-Eleven and for 10 bucks, you can get yourself 5,000 calories. And you're going to be lucky if you find one nutrient in those foods that you need. You're going to find a lot of carbs, a lot of trans fats, a lot of salt, and a lot of MSG, but very little nutrition. The purpose of this video isn't to be judgmental about people's weight or even your eating habits necessarily. But a reality of SHTF is going to be that you aren't going to have this abundance, this cornucopia of food at your disposal 24 seven to eat. So if you don't have the self discipline to not eat when you're hungry, not only are you not going to be able to ration your supplies, but you're also going to blow your cover. A simple way to manage your food cravings is if you have craving for say a chocolate bar, imagine yourself uh, buying the chocolate bar, eating the chocolate bar. Now imagine how you feel after you've eaten that chocolate bar in all of five minutes. You're not going to feel better, obviously. You're only going to feel worse about yourself. So play the tape through, as we say in addictions counseling. But that's not what this video is about. This is about the Minnesota experiment and things that we can learn. Because without a doubt, you will be mentally compromised significantly. I'm guessing just in this past week in dealing with this major life crisis that I'm going through, I'd probably say that my cognitive capabilities have diminished about 25 to 30 percent and that is significant if you have to make serious life or death decisions now it's both unfortunate and fortunate that experiments like this would no longer get ethical approval today but it's fortunate that it was done at some point so we can learn a little bit about what happens to the mind when it's deprived of food. So this was an experiment which was conducted at the end of the Second World War in Minnesota and 36 men were selected from a pool of 400 volunteers and 30, anything over 30 is usually reflective of the population as a whole. It's seen as scientifically significant, the results of those studies. So this was a 36 week total experiment. They took 12 weeks to get a baseline of the participants. So they knew what everybody's normal was prior to starting the experiment. So they weren't making any assumptions about what these guys' predispositions were. And over a 24 week period, these 36 individuals had their diet restricted in such a way which eventually led to them losing 25% of their body weight. So it's important that you understand that all of the negative outcomes that these guys experienced were only the result of them losing 25% of their body weight. So it's very likely that in a disaster situation, the situation may be a lot worse. So we then can assume that the emotional and psychological outcomes for you are going to be even worse if you say you lose 35, 50% of your body weight over a similar time period. So some of the things that they found in this study was that this starvation drastically increases depression, hysteria, and hypochondriasis. Now, hypochondriacs are people who think that they're sick when they may not really be sick. They exaggerate their symptoms. They're preoccupied with thinking about what's going on with their body. And that in many ways is the result of anxiety Depression is going to lead to lower energy levels. It's going to make you probably want to give up. It's going to make you less productive. Participants also experienced periods of emotional distress and they became increasingly more irritable. So more easily triggered by different things that went wrong in the environment and perhaps reacting and not responding to things in the best way that they could. A lot of people became apathetic and lethargic and many had diminished sexual interest which would be a good thing i suppose for sexual predators in a crap hits the fan situation that hopefully they naturally have their libidos diminished and they become socially withdrawn isolated and they were also report significant decline in concentration comprehension and their judgment capabilities now that perhaps is the most important of all is that if your ability to concentrate, to comprehend what's going on, to be of sound judgment, and to be an effective decision maker, if those things are compromised, those are your key survival skills in a social environment post-collapse. 
Another important thing to consider is that if you are the leader of your group, it's very important that you are a good role model for the group as a whole and that you keep it together. If you can't keep your cool and you are the leader of the group, well that is going to spread like contagion and will result in collective hysteria and groupthink. This is why perhaps there is something to be said, and I've made this point before in a response to a Mike Helton video, that there's something to be said about the person who is the primary decision maker having the lion's share of nutrition. You want the person who's making the majority of your decisions to be making good decisions and the only way you can ensure that they're going to be doing that is that they're satiated enough that their mind is not compromised. Furthermore, you're going to be in a situation in Western society at least, that most people aren't accustomed to, and that is sharing close quarters and functioning more collectively with a lot of people. This is something that we don't have to do in the McMansions of the suburbs. There are people in Hong Kong who live literally in spaces the size of most Americans' closets, and Canadians for that matter. Those people are arguably more adapted to that environmental pressure than you are. That is going to magnify the impact of these nutrient deficiencies. You have to be a very sound mind in your dealings with other people who may be more street smart than you. That could make all the difference in terms of long-term security of your group. Now a lot of people are just going to want to John Wayne this and think that it's not going to affect you or that you're going to have control over it. But the problem with how nutrient deficiencies manifest in our behavioral changes is that we don't notice it because usually it's so subtle that unless it's really, really profound, you never really do a double take and say, oh, I'm being overly irritable today or man, am I ever easily stressed out today or man, I really feel depressed. Maybe it's because I haven't been eating any fruits and vegetables in the last week. It's very easy to not observe the connection between your diet and your psychology and hence your behavior. These subtle changes to our behaviors are very imperceptible to us. Now your partner, your significant other is probably going to recognize these things in your behavior before you do. Simply having an awareness that this phenomena exists, that when you are deficient in nutrients or calories, either macro or micronutrients, if you can increase your self-monitoring and just watch yourself a bit more. You know, if you are reacting instead of responding to a certain situation, ask those around you, cross-reference your decisions, those people that you trust, you know, is this a good decision? And remaining grounded to the best of your ability so that you don't start stressing yourself out to the point where you do have health complications which are going to be magnified by your hypochondriacal thinking which is going to cause a vicious negative feedback loop in and of itself but don't just assume like the rule of threes you know a human can survive three weeks without food some people say six weeks it really does depend on your body fat and whatever sorts of supplemental nutrition you do have but don't just assume that you're gonna be 100% throughout that three weeks. You're gonna be 100% probably for the first 48 to 72 hours. There's some studies that show that during fasting, you actually be, your sensory acuity increases and you can think even better for a short period of time and it's a evolutionary thing we've adapted in order to allowing us to increase our chances of being successful at a hunt within the first phases of starvation, but once you pass that 48 to 72 hour window, you're gonna see drastic declines and you're not gonna be 100% come three weeks of not eating or just having a supplementary diet. You're probably going to be losing your mind. Actually, you are going to be losing your mind. Go and watch that video after the collapse, Hunger and Starvation, and that's gonna document what happens from start to finish from the last bite of food that you eat till your light slowly fades into the darkness. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, please leave your comments below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Canadian Pepper out.